I've been working on Noto since 2016. Initially, I was a technical program manager for FontMake and other font building tools. Then I started to own more and more of the fonts itself. You might consider me as the member of the second Noto generation. The first Noto generation has dispersed. Some of them are still at Google, but none of them work on Noto. I'm an ex-mathematician and an ex-computer science person. I have no formal background in font design or font engineering. Therefore, I might not be able to answer every Noto or font question that you might have. Noto as a brand name is derived from tofu. Tofu, also known as the bean curd, is an Asian food derived from soy milk. It is frequently served in cubes. Tofu is also a word used for the empty box. If a computer or a device, while displaying some text, cannot find an appropriate character in a font. The more languages one can cover, the less tofu will be presented to a user. No tofu on a computer or a device was our ultimate goal. Hence the Noto family name was created as a shortened no tofu. Noto fonts were started by the first Noto generation at Google around 2012. Initially, they were known as the Droid font family because of their connection with the Android phone system. However, after both Chrome and Android decided jointly to fund them, the first Noto fonts arrived in early 2014. Now, uh, Noto fonts are part of material organization. No tofu is not enough. We need more because they are Noto is part of the overall Google's design strategy. Initially, we open sourced the Noto binary fonts. However, since 2015, we have changed the strategy. We not only open source TTF font files, but we also open source the font sources themselves. They are all published on GitHub and licensed under SIL Open Font License 1.1. This way, for every font, but the CJK font, which has its own licensing scheme, others are able to create derivatives. For example, the government of British Columbia in Canada commissioned the merging of Noto Sans and Noto Sans Canadian Aboriginal fonts to create its own official font of British Columbia. It's good to see Noto used so heavily in British Columbia and the rest of the world. The open Noto sources enable us to think of Noto as a reference implementation, a sample how a script could be implemented. You might ask, is Noto a perfect reference implementation? You can find the answer uh, in open source uh, Noto issue tracking on GitHub. We have over 700 issues open against all Noto funds. 700 is a lot of issues, so we are not perfect. However, we have 
resolved over 1,000 issues, so we are getting better. Open source GitHub sources also allow you to fix issues yourself and contribute to making Noto better for everybody. This also means you also could try. What drives Noto content? How do we decide which scripts to cover? The most important part of the answer comes from Unicode. Only scripts defined by the Unicode have a chance to become part of the Noto family. If it's not part of the Unicode standard, then it will not be part of Noto. This applies to both scripts and to glyphs. Only code points in the Unicode might end up in Noto. This means that there is no chance you will see Noto Klingon until the Unicode Technical Committee approves it. Noto content is decided for us by the UTC with its yearly publication of the Unicode standard. We are a beneficiary of the UTC work, but most of all, we are a beneficiary of the work done by the script ad hoc group. I want to take this opportunity to shout out to the script ad hoc group. The script ad hoc group is a team of many volunteers who tirelessly review new script or script update proposals, discuss them, and finally prepare them for UTC approval. I've seen them at work and my head is off to their accomplishments. While Unicode defines a potential content of Noto, what actually gets done is defined by a yearly budget process. In some years, we have more money, so we get more scripts and more fund issues done. However, there are years when we are able to accomplish much less. Note that we get a constant stream of support from the open source community, and I wanted to thank them for their contributions. Besides money, we need to find the right people with the right knowledge and skills. For example, how do we find somebody who could develop a fund for Makassar script? How could we validate its correctness once it is developed? The validation is a problem for both a fund developer and us when we receive this fund. Initially, the goal was to have no TOEFL when displaying web pages or texts. It meant that it was enough to have just regular upright fund to support any given script. Maybe we would add bold for the scripts with the most users. However, sometime in the past, I was fortunate to meet Jerry Leonidas, professor of typography at University of Reading. One phrase stuck in my head after a conversation with him. He stated, that one needs to be able to distinguish between teacher's voice and a student voice. Since that time, we have been striving for all the living languages, including revival ones, to have at the minimum funds with a range of weights from regular through medium, semi-bold to bold. In the long run, depending on funding, I'd like to raise the minimum by adding another style. For example, if we have serif, we might want to add sans. No tofu 
was replaced by a goal to better support native typography. Noton supports 148 scripts covering 800 plus languages while generating over 2,250 instant instance font files for these scripts. In addition to the static instances, we also publish Noto variable fonts. These fonts, given proper operating system support, can be used in place of the static instances. For example, a single file Noto Sans Canada VF.TTF with its weight and width variable axis can take place 36 static instances supporting sans style of the Canada script. Recently, we've been busy updating Noto to catch up with the new scripts and updates in Unicode 10 through 12. Noto already started to support some items from the current Unicode 13. As of the end of September of this year, 2020, Noto for Chinese, Japanese and Korean, known as Noto CJK, covers 44,806 code points, while all other non-CJK scripts cover an additional 33,773 code points. Given that Unicode has over 143,000 code points as of version 13, Notofonts cover slightly over 50% of Unicode. Will Notofans reach 100% of Unicode coverage? I doubt it, for many reasons. For example, Noto CJK with its 44,806 code points already reached the limits related to the font file structure. We cannot fit any more glyphs into CJK unless we modify the standards. Also, adding the additional, let's say, 60,000 code points might mean creating 120,000 uh, glyphs, which at $100 per glyph minimum would require at least $12 million. We do not operate with this type of budgets. If you want to help with Noto, there are many opportunities. You can start by using Noto fonts. And if you encounter issues, you can file them on GitHub. If you know how to fix them, then you can clone the GitHub source, fix the issue and create a pull request on GitHub. I do not see Unicode, UTC, nor the script ad hoc group stopping their work. There will always be something new coming from them. Hence, not to work is never done. It takes a village to raise a child is an African proverb. To me, it means that a child needs interaction with a diverse environment and a diverse group of people to grow up as a full-fledged member of a family and society. Noto is an open source project for both binaries and sources. It strives to cover the scripts for the whole world. Therefore, it really has taken the whole world to create it. I have tried to list here all of the people and organizations or companies that contributed to NOTO. 
while the list has more than 137 entries. It might be incomplete. My apologies if I missed you or your organization. Thank you. Thank you all. You all made a difference. That's the end of my official talk. Please let the following not a credits roll, and then we can take questions. Thank you.